Hey, what's up everybody? It's literally the biggest skit on the planet. <laughs> no, but what's up? My name is Veraxity, and I actually ended up getting a message in my Discord server, uh, you know? I get messages all the time in there, you know? Most of them are just... Anyway, but man, I forget your name, so I'm sorry. But what this mystery man ended up asking me in Discord was, how do I not be a skid? And you know, that's a really good question. But first, let's start off with what is actually a skid. So if you look up just like, what's a skid, right? <laughs> you get a bunch of results that are just wood. Um, that's not the kind of skid we're gonna be talking about today. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if you're a lumberjack guy, please leave. No, I'm just kidding. You could stay if you want anyway, I don't care. We're gonna be talking about the programming type of skid, all right? Now, skid is short for script kitty. Now, if you know nothing about programming, what you're writing in your program is you're writing a script, right? So skids, essentially, what they do is they think they're hackers, right? They're wannabe hackers. They go out and they find scripts that other people coded because they can't code themselves, and then they use it for their own nefarious hacking purposes, right? So that's where the term skid comes from. Skid marks, all right? But it looks like there's a lot of questions over here, such as, are script kitties hackers? Um, let me just, like, say right now, the answer is both yes and no, right? They're the guys with the hacker mind Set that they just want to like you know deface websites and DDoS people and all this stuff but they also just don't have the knowledge and expertise to just you know make their own exploits they don't have the knowledge to actually just do it like they want to and it looks like our script kitty's dangerous yeah okay i don't know about that maybe if you give him like some sort of if you give him the holy hand grenade of hacks like i'm pretty sure you could make a skid dangerous because in reality he has no experience and he's like hey i've got nothing to lose but you know if you're doing those kinds of hacks yes you do you have a lot to lose but anyway enough talking about what a skid is i'm pretty sure you get the gist of what a skid is just a wannabe hacker right mr leet anonymous man on a uh, playstation you ever see the guy with the anonymous Anonymous profile pic. No, I'm not saying all anonymous members are skids. Don't come after me, Jesus. But anyway, how not to be a skid? So the first step to being less and less like a skid would be to do your own research. And what I mean by that is don't go looking up no docs tool or no hack tool, DDoS or anything like that and downloading programs that you just don't know are safe or not. Don't do any of that. I know that can kind of get a person into the whole hacking thing, but most of the hacking tools that you find online that aren't, you know, command line or open source, those tools are actually viruses themselves. And other hackers could be profiting off of your computer. So I think the first step to doing your own research on your computer is whenever you get a computer, it has an operating system on it, right? Usually it's Windows. Um, if you're a high class boy, if you're Steve Jobs' son, you might have a MacBook, but this is entirely up to personal preference, you know? I'm a Windows user. I like Windows. I like Windows 10. Well, I don't like it as much as Windows 7, but anyway, I digress. So what you want to do whenever you get a new computer or your first computer or whatever is you're going to want to familiarize yourself with your operating system. This means get an idea idea for how your file structure is laid out. Get an idea of how Windows or Mac saves files. If you're going to be installing programs on Windows, you're going to be using an EXE application. But if on Mac, you're going to be installing a DMG application. All right, you get me? This is some really basic stuff right here, but it's only one of the steps into becoming not a skid and becoming an ultra 1337 uber mega hacker. It's one of the first steps you're going to take, all right? And it also comes with, you know, getting out of a skiddy mindset. So let's define the skid mindset. So the skid Kid in question just found out how to DDoS somebody, all right? Now, what does he do? He goes to a website, enters in his little IP, you know, clickety click clack, boom, your internet's gone. All right, that is a result of the skid mindset. The type of guy who thinks he's actually cooler than everybody because he can take out your internet for five minutes. Trust me, young one, there is way more than taking out people's Wi-Fi. Now, if you are interested in things like DDoSing, don't let that discourage you. When you don't have a skid mindset, you come at it from a real hacker's mindset, you're gonna wanna know how that DDoS attack works, right? You're gonna wanna make your own DDoS program. And this leads me into step two of the three-step process to becoming a not skid, becoming a real hacker, all right? So as you could read by that sweet little transition there, the next step into becoming unskid-like is to pick a programming language, if you haven't already, that is. Now for new and aspiring coders, I recommend you start small, all right, with something that arguably isn't even a programming language at all, really, and that's HTML. HTML is the entire code of a website, basically. It's how the entire website's laid out, and you can see all the HTML of every website you go across just by hitting F12 or inspect element. But let's say you're past HTML and you wanna learn some backend 
backend development stuff. You want to learn how to make programs work. Enter Python. Python was there for me whenever nobody else was, alright? Python was that programming language that I could just understand. It was really easy to understand for me. And it's kind of what helped me branch out of becoming a skid, alright? I was actually writing my own programs in Python. You know, a couple years ago, maybe like a year and a half ago, that was a big step for me, right? I didn't know anything about programming, really. But let's look at an example of Python, just so I can show you how easy it is. This is a Python script. As you can see, these two things right here, those are called functions. And this down here is what makes the main function work. Now, as you can see, the process data function is actually tied into the main function. And for another Python example, this is an if-else statement. As you can see by the super simple program, it says name equals JSON. All right, so the name is JSON, we got it. If that name is JSON, print hello JSON. Or else, print sorry, I don't know you. That means if the name is not JSON, print sorry, I don't know you. Pretty simple, right? So I think all in all, if you take some time away from downloading pre-built programs and you searched on GitHub for, you know, the code of a DDoSer or something, and you actually studied the code of that DDoSer and read about how it worked and what it's doing, that is your first huge step out of the skid territory. Right there, you're already learning more than a skid. What a skid knows how to do is they know how to fill in fields and click buttons. Skids don't know how to code like that. So as long as you have a general idea of the syntax of a programming language and how it is set up, I think you're already in the clear and you're already knowing more than a skid will ever know. But I do think that everybody has to be a skid at one point, you know what I mean? No one's just gonna wake up and invent calculus, right? That just doesn't happen anymore, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not gonna wake up and just immediately know how to program, it doesn't happen like that. Which brings me into my third and final thing that you need to do to not be a skid. Ah oh yes, experience. The good old EXP points. If you're an aspiring hacker or developer, you're gonna wanna rack up these EXP points. And now this is taking me something back to one of my old professors. You know what he said to me? He leaned in all real close into my ear and he said, Caleb, that's my name by the way, it's Caleb. But he said, Caleb, what is that one thing that your teacher always taught you? And I said, practice makes perfect, right? And he said, yeah. Well, guess what? That's wrong. That is completely wrong. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. You would be telling me, Veraxity, what do you mean by this? Where are you going? What I mean is if you spend hours doing the wrong thing, your result is going to be wrong. You know what I'm saying? So don't spend hours trying to find unsolicited hack tools that probably have viruses in them. If you put those hours into actually learning a programming language, you will be much better off. But yeah, basically the third and final thing you need in order to be an ultra elite hacker is just a lot of experience. You know, there's no one set guy that teaches you how to be a hacker just because there's so many different things you could hack. You could hack your freaking toaster, dude. Like, I'm sure if there was a Wi-Fi connected toaster, somebody could actually hack into that and make it blow up, like, on command. It happened with cars before, I know that. But yeah, something that I did when I was a kid that got me to the place that I am today is just spending hours browsing. Use the computer that you have, browse the internet. It's probably the greatest tool that we have in our current society. The internet is a massive tool, and you know, TikTok talk and all these things shortening our attention span yeah that's probably not good to have on the internet but whatever it's there anyways i'm getting way off topic here yeah just have a lot of experience right do this over and over and over again if you're really that dedicated to becoming a non-skid like super elite hacker it's gonna take a lot of pizza mountain dew and doritos man i'm not even kidding maybe you're bored of ddosers maybe you don't want to program a ddoser anymore all right next step cracking tool program a cracking tool right next step program a wi-fi hacking tool it's anything Thing, man. You could really do anything, and I know that sounds a little bit corny or cheesy or whatever, but the best hackers are the most experienced hackers. All I have to say with that is just make sure what you're doing is right, and once you find out what it is that you want to do, what it is that keeps you interested in programming, program the shit out of it, man. If it's like token loggers that make you interested in this stuff, program a token logger that infects the sun and self-destructs the sun. Like, that's basically all you have to do. Just work at it, don't give up, and uh, take everything in that you learn. You know, don't just be the guy that gets ratted. Don't be the guy that downloads programs and you know gets a virus. You don't want none of that. But anyway, nothing beats good old fashioned hard work and experience. And it seems I'm running out of time to record. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope if you are a skid, this directs you out of the skid territory. It's not a fun place to be. It's pretty toxic. Everyone thinks they're the shit. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you like this video, be sure to smash the heck out of that like button. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. This is the Skid Lord, and I'm signing out. Out. Peace.